Key changes, also known as modulation, are an often very simple way of giving your songs a more dynamic structure. They can help take your song in a completely new direction. They can also help to free your songwriting creativity, giving you more options for writing truly original music. Parallel modulation is all about changing between major and minor keys on the same tonic root. For example, let's say our song began in the key of C major. A parallel key change would change the tonic from C major to C minor. So the tonic root remains the same, we just change the quality of the chord built on that root from major to minor or minor to major. This change can be approached in a number of ways. The best place to start is with some basic ear training, so you can both hear and apply this parallel key change no matter what key you start in. For this example, we're going to use C major and C minor as our parallel tonics. To make the change between keys work more smoothly, we need to proceed the change with a chord that works well in both keys. The strongest chord for this is the 5 chord, also known as the dominant. In the key of C major or C minor, the dominant would typically be G major, and by extension, G7. First, we're just going to alternate between the C major and C minor tonics, using that G7-5 chord as the pivot chord. You should be confident with identifying this movement in different keys. Use the ear training audio on the lesson page to help with this. If we incorporate this movement into a larger progression, we can hear how a predictable C major key progression resolves into a more sombre C minor key through that shared 5 chord. So as I'm sure you can hear, this kind of key change has quite a dramatic effect, but because we've used a strong common chord, there's enough of a connection between the two keys to keep it from sounding too forced. Now, once you're in that new key, it's up to you where you go with it, but for the sake of example, let's say we wanted to move from C minor back into its parallel C major key. We can still use that 5 chord link, but before we make that link, we might want to use some natural minor key movements as follows. So, the first three chords, C minor, A flat major, and F minor, are natural chords in the C minor key. This helped to reaffirm C minor as the key centre. Using that G7 pretonic chord, which is used commonly in both C major and minor keys, gave us a direct route back into the C major key. So no matter which key you start in, major or minor, there's always a direct link into a parallel key through the 5 chord. Another way of changing key is to use borrowed chords from that new key. For example, starting on C major again, we could borrow a chord from the C minor key in order to move seamlessly into that new parallel key. Here, I've borrowed the 6 chord from C minor, which is A flat major, and used that to link the C major key to C minor. Taking it the other way around, moving from C minor to C major, I could borrow a chord from the C major key to make the transition smoother. Here, I've borrowed the IV chord from C major, which is F major. So 
So we're looking for these pivot chords that help us to link the two keys. As mentioned before, the 5 chord makes the strongest link, but try borrowing different chords from the parallel key, and let your ears be the judge of whether or not it sounds good. Also experiment with how parallel key changes can help form the structure of your song. For example, I might play the verse in a minor key, and then change to a more upbeat major key chorus. Or, I might make a parallel change for the bridge, and then move back into the original key for the chorus. So there are many options for using parallel key changes, both in the chord sequence and song structure. When combined with other key change methods, you can give your songs a very dynamic and progressive structure, and really take your listener on a journey. For more on this lesson, including ear training audio and more examples, follow the link in the description. Cheers.